Welcome to the Max Bet Podcast, a podcast dedicated to everything gaming. I'm Landon Jones, here with Mike McKiskey. Let's get started. And I uh, will always podcast with you. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> welcome to the Max Bed Podcast. I hope you liked my song coming into this episode because it's a freaking good one. It's a doozy, buddy. You got underrated pipes. I think you can sing better than most people give you credit for. <laughs> no credit. I'm not signing you up for an album. Okay. I'm just saying, like, you know, you probably wouldn't be the most embarrassing karaoke partner. It would be called the Not Now 2022. <laughs> Remember the now? Or was it Wow? Wow. Yeah. It was Wow, yeah. All the, the wow. Hits, yeah. yeah. Like wow, the, 1985. You know what? I, so naturally, just because of my upbringing, I was more of a jock jams guy. Yeah, you yeah. get all the, like, you ready for this? <laughs> boom, boom, boom. You know, whatever. Well, like, Turns you, out you, I am. You get all the sports music pumping in your... Uh, like I'm just constantly. In um, we just got back from the National IGA. Indian. Oh, it's now IGA. Well, it's now IGA. Which listen, <laughs> which I think is hilarious. IGA. Yeah, because when you write IGA on paper, yeah, looks weird. A lot of people can go the can go the wrong way with it. Yeah. What does that cause? Like I get it. it's not necessarily intended to be a derogatory thing, but hey. So they they just said, look, let's just eliminate all confusion. Drop the end. It's the Indian Gaming that Association. That was really the conversation. Around That's what it? they said. I so I think I read the article. So I didn't hear it directly. I don't know who the reporter was. It was CDC Gaming though. So this so is I got not their, fake you know, news. Not fake news. Real okay. news per like a valid source in the yeah. CDC. And they said, look, I think it was quoting the chairman. I'm assuming it was Ernie yeah. Stevens that was saying it. But they were like, look, yeah, heard enough of the jokes. Heard enough of yeah. that. We just want to get out ahead of it or finally catch up. Be to progressive it. about it. Why would you? Right? Because yeah. it's like, look, I, I don't. I never knew it that way because yeah. I always heard it said. So for me, it's like, yeah, it's not. Like you don't even think of it. Yeah. But I would imagine, like, if you're of a certain ethnic background, you go, really? Like, yeah. you really need to cling to this? And I think everyone just goes, yeah, you really don't. Like, yeah. there's no, there's no pride in it. Like, it's Indian gaming. The national part is somewhat irrelevant. It's still Indian gaming. It'll always be Indian gaming. Yeah. Drop the end. Let's roll. So. Let's roll. So that's the show we were at. It was fun. Anaheim. Better Anaheim. than I thought. Yeah. Better than I thought. You know, I'm sure you had a great time because you had a king size bed that was lavish <laughs> so, and so wonderful. We, we went Airbnb style for those listening. We were about a yeah. mile from the conference center. So we're in a decent little part of town. Yeah. Sketchy little place, though. <laughs> yeah. Right? So uh, we would get there at 10 p.m. or whatever it was first night, dinner with some folks, get over there, and you're going, oh, it was like old school little. What was she? I kept calling her the Russian security lady. I don't know if yeah, that was 100 She's right. definitely Russian. So she's like, Right this way. I got your parking here. And she's, you get the calm over that. And she's like, she goes, that's your unit there. I watch you go in. I'm like, Hold okay. On. Let me paint this <laughs> yeah, picture. Please do. Okay? Please do. So, I'm doing a bad job. Uh, we went with one of our, our coworkers. Yeah. Yep. Kelly Koffler, who has a channel called Beyond Blackjack. If you haven't checked it out, please check it out on YouTube. <laughs> like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Uh, we went with Kelly Koffler, Mike. Us too. And myself. Yeah. Yep. So we thought it would be... Uh, more financially affordable. Yeah, because we're... Can I say that? We don't have expense accounts. So yeah, we don't have expense yeah, accounts. Yeah. So we decided to get an Airbnb. It was a three-bedroom Airbnb. What a deal. Yeah, can't, can't go wrong. So we get greeted by our Russian security guard. We walk into uh, the unit, and I see two bedrooms, both with king-size beds. Oh. I'm like, sweet. I'm grabbing one of those. Where's the third one? Where's yeah. the third one? Well, the third one... Wasn't really a bedroom. It was a it was like nook. A cove. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was probably once the pantry to the kitchen at the house. Could have been with a twin size bed. And the twin and size a, bed was the full size of the thing. Yeah, right? like there it was, was the you couldn't do anything else. There's no karate in there. It's Correct. just the bed. Yeah. And so in my head, I'm going, well, there's no way that Mike is going to fit on this yeah. bed. Yeah, I was so, tall, I was taller than the, yeah, the space. And I couldn't do that to him. And then there's no door on this, and it literally yeah, so opens right up to the bedroom. Yeah. So I'm not going to put the lady into it. So I just go, shit, this is my fucking bedroom for the week. And so I had to sleep on this little twin-size bed that was not comfortable. And uh, anyways, it doesn't matter. I you handled it well, I'll bit. say, because like I – Let's say it was, you know, six inches longer and I could have fit in it or whatever, but like it would have been, I don't do well. Like I'm a, I need my time to just go be by myself. 
right? So we get oh, home from the do day, you right? Oh, you do too? You, know, you don't need that? Oh, you seem no, to I do. Oh, but do you? I had to go, <laughs> I had you to go live like, in a pantry for four days, three days. <laughs> well, because we get back and then I'm laughing because like I just go in the room like, oh, I'll catch you guys in an hour. I'm going to do some emails and be alone. Yeah. And then I don't know what she was doing. Probably same thing, calling her family. And then you would just be out in the living room. Well, I had to be. Yeah, she wanted to watch TV yeah, when yeah, so and like the living room out. was yeah, attached yeah, yeah. to my pantry. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, so next time we're gonna get hotel rooms. This way, no one has to wear, feel weird about like social. It wasn't that but, bad. I just like to make it. But uh, yeah, just a pity party for yourself. Anyway, yeah. so it was, um, but it was a better conference than I thought. Like the conference center was cool. The yeah. facility surrounding areas were cool. Like I'm so used to San Diego, and I just like being in San Diego generally yeah. that I was like, oh, we're gonna miss out. I felt like and I was actually pretty good. Yeah. What'd you see at the show that you liked? I know we were both busy. I didn't see you at all during the whole show. I know. We were running running and kind of doing meetings and everything. You know, so it wasn't a specific product, right? But vibe-wise, and maybe I'm playing a little hometown cooking because he was just on our show like three episodes ago, but I was impressed with the clips. So the more I get to know Tim, the better I like him. Just a stud dude, like just a guy, like just talking to him as a person, like not always gaming related, just just golf chat or whatever. Yeah, Tim's a stud. Good dude. So I enjoyed him, Brendan is number two guy. Obviously, Laura's over there. So some of the team meeting them. Their booth was cool, though. I thought that the way they designed it, the tribal artist there who was doing his pictures, signing them, right, doing that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. So just from a vibe perspective, I was like, that's a pretty cool crew they're building. Like, they're putting something cool together. They didn't play their games. I assume the games are good. So I don't I can't speak to the product of it. But they, I thought, stuck out to me from like, a, oh, I didn't expect that. Isn't that funny that sometimes the culture is more powerful than the content? Here's the thing. Think uh, of that. Yeah. And well, because again, that like if so you weird. talk about it, yeah, just bask in that. <laughs> Isn't it though? <clears throat> Mostly, most of the time, always. Because here's the thing, like, and I've never been a slot director. Yeah. I've obviously sold to slot direction VPs, but it's like, you could probably buy a slot machine for roughly the same price from about 15 different people. Yeah. So don't you want to work with ones that are like. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Or, you know, somewhat easy to work with and not just going to make you hate every time they call you. Right. Like it matters. Like, it again, matters. listen, if you're ATI or Lightning one or some of the big guys, like fine, you're going to have your guaranteed percentage. I feel like more and more, but when you get into the, the, the next waves, like yeah. maybe like whatever eclipse is probably tier three. So yeah. you're looking at eclipse GA. or blueberry GA, like those yeah. guys that are smaller, but growing, you go, the difference at that level is probably going to be which one of these guys I want to deal with. Or girls, right? Because I know some of the reps and executives, like GA's got Jean running the show. She's a lady. So it's like, which one of these people right. or teams do I just would rather do business with? I feel like that's going to matter, especially as you go down. Like Aristocrat and Light and Wonder and IGT, they're just, you got to deal with it. You got to take it. Yeah. It's, I, I found it interesting. It, it seems to be the case for every show. There's more technology companies than there was before, right? There's just, You've you got mean? Kieran's keen oh, team, like, like gaming different, analytics different ancillary technology, and, yeah. um, optics. Uh, there just seems to be a lot more. Yeah. Uh, Lakers are doing cool stuff. The yeah. Market there's, tracks, there's, but, a, yeah there's a ton of cool tech companies coming up. And that was always the big, I, I guess, thing in our industry is that we didn't have enough tech. And now it seems like there's more tech companies coming in trying to solve that, that well, problem. Well, they're kicking that at the door, right? right? I mean, you go all the way back in our podcast episode about. to like Katie, yeah. right? Leave her out on how long ago it was. It was audio only. So it was a while ago, but it yeah. was just like, she was just like, yeah, it's one of the frustrating parts. Like we yeah. heard the GC had a compliance, like it's not lawsuits. It's how do we get around, not around, but how do we educate yeah. regulator? How do we go, Hey, this cool tech that's been adopted in every other major market. Right. We want to bring it into gaming and people go, well, I don't want to do that. Right. And so fighting that fight. And I feel like what you're starting to see to your point is more, you know, whatever barbarians at the gate going, we're going to knock these walls down and start pushing tech into this biz, which would be nuts. Yeah. In a good way. Good nuts. And I did go to the aristocrat booth and yeah. I got to tell you, I had a lot of fun there. Yeah. Yeah. I just love their games. So yeah. I, just, I felt like I was gambling by yeah. playing them for free. I'm like, ah, now I get to smash this at a hundred dollars to spin. <laughs> Scratch the itch with no, no not, loss. Yeah. Yeah. It was nice. That's funny. Yeah. LNW had a good booth, Light and Wonder. They had a lot of yeah. stuff going on. So that was fun. Um, just good to see those guys. Like I know a lot of those people. So that's yeah. fun. Uh, you know, at a huge booth, Ainsworth. Let's give him Mike Trask a hard time. I go, yeah, look at the size of this booth. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, normally you would say your booth size is somewhat relative to your it's position not the in the size biz. of the booth that matters, I bud. I get it, but it's the math model and the pricing. But it's uh, and the culture and the culture. Remember, we just, just talked. Yeah, we just talked. Where about have I that. been for the last twenty minutes? <laughs> uh, 
Um, but yeah, so I mean, that was interesting, right? So you see maybe they're making some moves, trying to grow their floor share, doing some stuff. Like the booth looked good. Again, I didn't have a ton of time, yeah. which is weird because I felt like conference day, we were just running, watching yeah. conferences, hanging out. Then day two, it just felt like meeting after meeting, um, which was ultimately good, but different. Uh, so yeah, I didn't play any of the games, but just going, walking by, seeing some people going, oh, that jumped out, right? Like, I made it a mission. So on day two, I walked around as if I was an operator. And okay. I, we know most of the salespeople in most of these companies, right? And I just yeah. said, show me the cool shit. What would you sell me? Show me. <laughs> sell like, me this yeah, pen. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And kind of went through the process. And what I learned is it's funny to see everybody's pitches, right? Yeah. And I realized how big of a tool bag I must have been when I was selling <laughs> games because it's like, yo, and this is the latest and greatest. And if it you walk funny. over here, this is number one. And everybody, it's doing two times yeah. house, two times house average. It is, it's funny because you're right. Like you, I've noticed that even when I was in the in the job, like how yeah. funny it would be, especially like newer reps. Yeah. Not true, it's a, it could be everybody, but like sometimes they'll go, They'll just be talking to you. Hey, the Yankee game, man, that was crazy. Uh, some some random normal conversation, and then yeah. the customer walks on. They're like, "Hey, Mr. Customer, here, let me check you. <laughs> show you the new box. It's forty two inches, and it's in <laughs> And if you buy now, yeah, yeah, act now, act like, now, sign here. Sign. Like, did we just get into late night radio? What just happened here? How, how are all of a sudden? It's like you're a normal person. Just speak normally in these meetings. But yeah, uh, but sometimes you just got to go to that mental place. We were like, I just got to regurgitate my sales points and my whatever, ever. And so, yeah, you get into that, that rhythm. It almost, we're all guilty of it. Yeah. I guarantee I've done it right in my oh, yeah. history. I try not to do it, you know, in the later stages, but again, you just, sometimes you go and here's the, it's Groundhog. Here's, here's the, the star wall guys. and it's yeah. great. Yeah. Whatever. Right. You're, you're pimping. So that's, uh, you're pimping, <laughs> pimping, well, since pimping, pushing, you know, since pimping. Jay-Z is rubbed off on me. Um, but yeah, so it's, you know. Yeah. It's a good show all in all. Who's the, who's the star of the show for you? Did you have, uh, like, anybody that go, oh, watch out? And uh, maybe outside the big three, because we assume they're always going to have some kind of stuff. Hon honestly, and uh, Aruze, mm. and their claw game, man. Oh, I really think yeah, it's Yeah, you're cool. big on these, like, carnival games grown up. It's Well, it's not even that. It's these, like, what we're going to talk about today. It's these entertaining style yeah. of games, right? Even, like, their um, ETG craps game. Is yep. it, it's just really cool to see us kind of go in, into So I didn't play the claw. Is it physical claw? Like, a you physically physical grab claw, it. So just you like you're back oh, with the, trying to get the stuffed animal for your yeah. prom date. Yeah, I got it. And then it, it has, like, an associated value with whatever that ball is. Like, a little gold bar in there. Hmm. And then you drop it in the thing, and then, boom, the value of that. So you don't get gold. the gold bar. You get, hey, that gold bar is worth 20 bucks. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I did a $50 spin okay. we'll call it and then i That's grabbed a ball claw. Yeah, geez. look at a thousand bucks that ball was worth okay. a thousand 20x a thousand like yeah. okay well that so was a fun game i like it that's good i just find those things kind of interesting it's, it's a it's high new, limit game cool. i wouldn't it's have expected like, that type of number i mean i guess it's configurable but like i wouldn't like i don't know that i'm playing a 50 dollar claw to me, me it's like hey give me four or five dollar spins because that's what i would do at the arcade it's for me. It's not a regurgitated pick and progressive, or I a regurgitated yeah, yeah, yeah. hold and spin, or, re, or twelve this, free games yeah, at five yeah. times wild. I mean, expanding I get it. Yeah, yeah. Re, expanding, <laughs> expanding reels. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wheel, wheel, wheel. Yeah. I don't know why I had to do that. It was fun, I, but I'm glad you did. Yeah, it's good. And so, uh, yeah, so that makes sense. Yeah. So Ruse jumped out to you from a claw game perspective. I think just in like Eclipse them on the being culture innovative, for me. right? And I'm excited yeah. to see Eclipse Coin Pusher. We talked about it. Tim, I can't wait to see it, brother. Yeah, we're pumped. That's a guy where I'm excited to go to Georgia. Are we, we going to do it? We got to go. We just got to put on the schedule. But yeah, we're going to go do that. Okay. Well, we've got like. We got Tim, the open invite. When a guy like go. that open invites you, you got to take the open We got to go. Yeah, for sure. So, so it's a matter gotta, of just when timing. When you get and back get from Legoland, which is where you're headed after <laughs> this, as soon as, we'll, I, we'll as, plan soon as I stop this microphone, I'm going to Legoland. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no doubt. And I think, um, yeah, you know, so some random, and people might get sick of us talking about him, but. The old blueberry CEO, Berkey boy. I love Berkey boy. So me too. Just good human being, but more interested than anything. So he's been a guy that has proven to never welch on a bet. Right. So historically <laughs> when we worked at AGS, he, oh, yes. he throws out and he goes, he went, so just anyone that doesn't know, uh, we all at one point got PXG golf clubs as like a sales incentive. Cause he just randomly one day goes, if you guys hit this number or whatever the calculus was, he goes, I'm buying everybody PXG irons. And then so, he found out the PXGs were like $5,000 a set. And, don't he goes, know. and he goes, well, I already said it, so we're going to do it. He <laughs> basically said, I'm a man of my word. I said it. I'm going to do it. So we did it. And then he did the beard thing. And he goes, ah, if the Bengals don't win the Super Bowl, I'll shave my beard. And guess what? We got video proof. He cashed that in. Yeah. So he did it to himself again. So he told his team. Uh, and so, it's, again, to this story to me is more important than the actual reality. But, like, he said, hey, if I can crack, if he goes, you guys build me a slot game 
that cracks the Eiler. Shout out to Adam and Todd. Eiler's cracked uh, top 25 game. Not the small vendor, not the, the actual top 25. I'll get a tattoo of the game. That's what he said. <sighs> So lo and behold, in the latest rankings, Those I think the game's called. Right? I, I don't know what number it was. It, it was, was on the so twenty. Yeah. I should good. I should have fact checked my own story. But whatever it was, Treasure Hunter was the game. Yep. So on Blueberry, I don't know anything about the cab, and I just know it's their game, and it cracked the top twenty-five. And now he's figuring out is probably cracking the symbol in the he's game. He's giving like a octopus on his yeah hip on his hip. Bottom. I don't know where he's gonna put it, but he's his TBD on the location. But he's gonna carry through. So I just hope that we can be there to kind of film some of that for him and do another <laughs> video because this guy. <laughs> Puts himself in these crazy situations, but follows through every time. So, and then what we got to do is interview his wife and go, how do you feel about coming home to like no beard tattoo guy? Because he just keeps making these random claims to betting. I love Berg and his, <laughs> his side bets. And I love golfing with him yeah. too, because he'll get so frustrated. He'll lose like a $20 bet. and be like, next bet, hundred bucks, longest drive. And then he'll just <laughs> crack it over and hit someone's yes. house. He's like, yeah. shit. And that cost me a thousand because I got to buy you a hundred and that guy a $900 window. Oh, uh, we love you, Berg. Uh, so anyway, this is a little roast of Andrew. It uh, started off as a praise sash. But anyway, so that was good from the show uh, but yeah I just I think it was good energy like yeah. to me the nice part was just to see so many people a lot of people a lot of customers you talk to are actually buying products again yeah. which was not the case for a while there uh, a lot of vendors seem excited about their new thing to your point a lot of a lot of what do you want to call game show sales pitches coming at you just go here's our newest things like okay yeah fair enough yeah we should have probably just did a whole episode based off of our trip to Nega because I got I go. Yeah, it's because it was awesome. Um, this was a really long episode that we just did. Yeah, it was unbelievable. <laughs> with somebody that had nothing to do with that guy. This guy flew all the way here from Ireland. From Ireland. So what I will say, it, it, so he goes, yeah, I flew to see you guys. It's like partially true. Partially right? true. But the testament, and this is what I, I don't know if I said it to him uh, in the interview. I definitely said it to him before. I said, so he's an Irish guy. Yeah. I said, and his son, I think it was his son, just turned twenty one. So his youngest kid is now officially twenty one. Flew to Vegas to celebrate. So to me, when you're going, I'm international, I'm an Irish guy, I can go anywhere in the world. You're a legendary drinking culture. Where are you going to go? You came here? Vote seal of approval for Vegas. Right? To me, that's a feather in the cap. Bo, Bo should write that down for the UNLV sales pitch. Like, the Irish come here to celebrate. So and uh, that's why he's here, I think. And then swung by us to And he told us a story that was very interesting about a massive deal that he got done with one of the biggest gaming companies. Thanks to your boys based off of someone listening to Todd House Halter on our podcast. Max Bed Podcast, changing lives. Changing lives, taking names. So before you get in the interview, like us and subscribe. It helps Grab us out. Grab some popcorn. Get some popcorn. Get a bubbly. Hit the like button. Hit that like button. And uh, we'll and see you on the other side. Let's do it. See you on the other side. Well, John, welcome to the show, man. Appreciate you coming by. Flew all the way from the Emerald Isle, from Ireland to Vegas. Literally, just to see you guys. I appreciate that. Yeah, I appreciate that. I know you probably have one or two other things on the agenda, but for me, I'm going to pretend it's all for us. Well, there's a very good reason for me coming here to you guys today, because yeah. there's a big uh, appreciative thank you going to you guys for, for lots of reasons. But yeah. I'm sure we'll touch on that. Let's tell on that story real quick, because I think this is hilarious. So people always ask me, how did you meet all these people, right? Because like a lot of times we get connected with folks, and some of our challenges, some of them go, oh, well, I know John, so I'm going to introduce you. John, you and I connected out of the blue. So, Landon, I don't know if I even told you this story. So, one day, we're, I don't know, 20 episodes deep. I know the key fact here was after Todd Hausholter's interview. So, yep. that, that becomes relevant. Going down the road, and John pings me on LinkedIn. He goes, hey, man, I owe you a big thank you. So, like, let me know when we can get together. And I go, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you thanking me for? I know you're already here, right? Like, you're obviously a big deal. And so... I guess somehow our podcast helped you do a deal with uh, with Evo, or there was some connection there. So yeah, maybe I, t I, you tell the story probably better I, than I would. I mean, don't play it down, guys. It, yeah, it, yeah. it is what it is. So I was uh, listening to the podcast a few times. Great start. Listening to some great characters that I, I had known yeah, right. over yeah. different guises over the years. And I heard Kevin Sweet talk, and then I think he called out Todd Housewalter yeah, right. and Evolution. Yeah. <laughs> So I said, uh, oh, it's going to be an interesting one to listen to. And then I hear Todd talking. So, and and uh, you guys also got me up off my ass to, to start getting a bit of exercise again because you were that perfect time. <laughs> oh, perfect. Yeah. 5K around my local park. And Beautiful. It, was, <laughs> it just fits. So the 5K it, boys, that's us now. Lots of things working. So I listened to Todd and Todd is talking as he does because, you know, Todd Householder is like a force of nature. Oh, he's oh yeah. Smartest guy. I always talk, describe him. They're like, how do you describe Todd? Go, he's just the smartest guy in every room he walks into. Oh, yeah. It's how I think of him, right? And maybe there's some rooms where that's not true, but 
generally I'm like, he's pretty brilliant. In the field of gaming. Uh, fair. I mean, yeah, you yeah. definitely limit it to that, but I think generally oh, he's, he's a smart pretty, guy. He's not an astrophysicist, but, fine, but yeah, yeah, I yeah, get he's, it, yeah. He's the Albert gaming Einstein and, and math of, and of all gaming. That, yeah. And he's a nice guy. In yeah, right. Yeah, an yeah. absolute thorough gentleman. Super so humble. I'm listening to Todd is talking about all the wonderful things that evolution are doing, and I'm sure we're going to talk about Evo here in a yeah, second yeah. and our yeah. connection. Uh, as you guys call it, the biggest gambling company no one's ever heard of. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. exactly. Sure. Um, but I'm listening to Todd. He's saying, I'd love to have a technology that would do this with a wheel game and identify different bets. Happening. And I'm thinking, okay, hang on a second. Kind of been working on that for about uh, eight or nine years. Yeah, right. I've kind of patented <laughs> that kind of technology. I should reach out to him. This is exactly what we've got. And I have to be honest with you, I work in the land based space as well. So yeah. Yeah. those online people are at strange ethereal yeah, right, right, right. all sorts exactly. of different skill sets. You know, lots of guys in hoodies and, and sure. trainers and going, hey, I wear a suit. I'm here without a tie today and I actually feel a bit naked. Yeah, I was going to say, you're okay. Yeah, I'm dressed, dressed down, down, man. Yeah, I appreciate absolutely. You. Yeah. <laughs> it's a Vegas thing. Yeah. So um, I'm listening and God, I got to reach out to him. And I had, I, we had, uh, we had dealt with DigiWheel and we did a soft launch at G2 2019 and we kind of launched formally at the Ice Show in London in 2020. And of course, the Great time to launch a product. Ah, hey, yeah, absolutely. Exactly. It's all about timing, right? <laughs> so we put on the shutters a few weeks later. I thought, but you know what? Things happen for a reason. It was a bit of serendipity. So when I heard this, I got to reach out to Todd. And so I reached out to one or two of his product people that had come to us at ICE and thought it was amazing. They yep. work in wheel games. And, and it wasn't really going anywhere. So I actually reached out to Kevin Sweet, who's a good mate at Todd. Yeah, yeah. And I yeah, said, yeah. hey, Kev, would you actually make an introduction? Because... and. To be fair, I'd been using Kevin as a bit of a somewhat, what do you think, who is another simply yeah. magnificent guy in this industry, very generous with his time and very indulgent. Uh, and I have a lot of appreciation for Kevin and what he does as well. But we eventually hooked up with Todd. He said, yeah, let's let's have a quick look, see what you got, boom, boom, boom. So we arranged a short demo and we did it live. The demo turned into a long demo yep. and a longer conversation. And it's, hey, this is great because I see an awful lot of stuff that's future basis, conceptual, but you've got it done. It's I here, said, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm an engineer and, and this is massively over-engineered because yep. we don't want shit to break. So right. you got to put it out there, get it working. And we're still refining it. We're still refining it today. We've some right. incredible stuff coming. But anyway, so he said, I, I'd love, love to do something with you. Would you be interested in doing something for us? And I said, sure, I would. I said, but, you know, we're talking to many others, which we were at the time. Um, the, the, the leading lights in the industry were all interested for lots of reasons because what we do is really really difficult to do from a, just a technology point of view I'm not blown up by the way but what a pain it took me for many yeah, years right. from, uh, from from my 26 year old twin sons that work in the company today I remember when they were like 16 and I had a polystyrene model on our kitchen table of, of wow. the wheel and its functions and I'm writing stuff down and eventually moving to little models and, and, and adding electronics and going to where we are today but uh, so I said sure let's have a conversation I think from that day to flying to Malta to have a conversation with Todd was like two weeks, three weeks. Wow. And <laughs> so you went from, hey, Kevin, can you hook me up with an intro? So you get the intro, you do the demo, and within three weeks you're now in Malta going through the whole thing with them? Well, not just that. At the end of the day, I'm shaking hands with Todd Hosso. Yeah, on a deal, on a deal for your company. Yeah, yeah, wow. I'm so fascinated by the fact that you had met one of his product uh, I guess someone in product development. And many of them. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting because that kind of fell by the wayside. So how many deals have been like seen at G2A just that in someone saw and then it just fell by the wayside because someone didn't follow up or someone didn't see the connection? But imagine how many people approached them with, hey, have I? Yeah. Well, well, I was just going to say that, point. right? So when I was in product back in the day with different companies, it was like, Hey, the sales guys would get, they go, oh, you're the sales guy? I got this new thing. They're like, no, talk. The go talk to the product guy. And then you'd have to deal with all these pitches and you're like, another next big groundbreaking thing and you're like yeah i get it right and to your point probably 90 percent or more are not really yep. gonna jive either with your own company yeah. strategy or maybe even at all so it's you kind of let them off the hook a little bit but then you look at this and you go well, that clearly worked and it's working now and so yeah you just got to get in the right hands but i knew that i, I did that for many years and we'll, we'll touch on my history in yeah, a yeah. second but i had some spectacular failure in the past but i ended up becoming a consultant because become a wealth of useless information over yeah. many, many years of accumulating stuff. Of and then somebody said, hey, we need help with this. And, and uh, what are you going to charge? And I'm going, charge? Yeah. Hey, all of a sudden, yeah. I'm a consultant. Yeah, okay, right. yeah, someone's yeah. willing to pay for that. And um, so th I, I knew the process because a lot of engineering teams, you're like slipping paper under the door. Let, don't, don't let them interact with other humans because yeah, yeah. You know, they're not the most sociable people, particularly hardcore developers, gifted people that produce incredible stuff. But... 
maybe not the most connected, like the polish of the sales yeah, guy right. to the, the grunt work of code jockeys right through to the product people that put it all together. And there's, there's different skill sets we brought to bear. So you go to one with a particular vertical approach with, yeah, it's not in their, yeah. their, their wheelhouse, right? So you got to kind of get, but we did eventually. Yeah. And um, it was great. He said, we, we love this. And, yeah. and this is something that we conceptually we have games. And this is the thing about evolution and Todd Householder in particular. I don't want to be blown up too much uh, here. He pump his tires a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Because um, every time we, we talk to me, yeah, yeah, we try and bring it down. Actually. No, yeah, right. I'm, I'm kidding. He's, he's <laughs> great. But these guys have ideas that are just outrageous. Nothing yeah. is off the table. If and it they can go happen, for them. We'll do it. Yeah. And that? That's why we fit because. No matter what I was doing, no matter what weird stuff I was thinking of, and I've got a lot more coming as well, these guys are just, except talk about a culture that's just, well, what's the best thing we can do for a player? And that's not for our customers, the 800 odd or the thousands of, yeah. of websites that, that feed evolution content. What can we do? And no matter, no matter what the limit is, you know, it's like, you know, Hollywood blockbusters, they, yeah, they right. go with a budget, it's a couple hundred million to produce something and it could yeah. be an absolute flop. Yeah, like the Northman, it sounds like it's turning into. Yeah. Like, <laughs> they put a lot of money in that and apparently no one's gone to see it. So yeah, it happens more probably often Absolutely. than not. Absolutely, yeah. but the gaming industry That's the same. how you do it, yeah. yeah some, of sure. our, some of our stuff goes straight to DVD too, right? So <laughs> yeah, it's not, exactly. It doesn't always <laughs> Straight to out. streaming these days, yeah. But, exactly. uh, but it's when you've got tens of millions of people as a sample audience, then you kind of get to, you get good at it real sure. quick. And the one thing about the, the Swedish cultural influence from the start of evolution, which I absolutely love, is their, I, I mean, Todd uses the expression, they agonize over yeah. certain, and they really do, because excellent, or anything other than excellence isn't an option. Yeah. Hmm. Of course, I'm I'm gone. Okay, well, you know, the, the old fashioned adage that the enemy of of good is great. We, yeah, right. We'll get it good enough, and it's not it's not good enough. No such so, thing. Yeah, which is great because it holds you to a much higher standard. And we were talking hmm. briefly before coming on. It's it's amazing to see the kind of different microclimates and ecosystems of the gambling industry worldwide, particularly as a consultant, because I I did a lot of interpretation for what boards of companies either didn't understand or, or didn't get or yep. wouldn't back because they didn't understand that, you know, we put a million into this and they said it'll give me hundreds of millions of return and then it, it goes absolutely pear-shaped and yeah. they get bugged. So how can you trust these guys again? Yeah. That's just not the culture and evolution. That's why I love doing what you're doing. But back to that original conversation in Malta, Todd and I shook hands and it was kind of, hey, let's just do it. Yeah. What obstacles do you think are in your way to doing this? And we, we go through it. And this is a all one day session. I think yeah, we right. yeah, yeah. briefly for a lunch, yeah. and, which is great. But <laughs> well, that's the way I work as well. So you start and you finish when you're finished, right? If that's yeah, right. six o'clock in the evening or midnight or three in the morning, it, it yeah. is what it is. No, I've never been, I've never punched a clock in my life. I've been self-employed since I was like 20 years old. I thought I was actually unemployable. Because <laughs> how could you take on someone like me? <laughs> that just literally goes off this. But I make sure that, at this point in my life, and I'm not that old, I'm only 50, I know I look older, I had a rough old paper around, what can I say? But <laughs> it just means that we can empower an awful lot of people to do what we do. And again, that's the old adage of, you know, hire smarter people than you, but it's true, people are better at certain things. And I, I keep talking all the time that when you're kind of self-employed or entrepreneurial, you kind of, you know, you're the CEO, CTO, VP of sales. And, and, and I said this in, in our, our little notes when we were talking about doing this, that doesn't make you very good because, oh, yeah. look at him, he's multitasking, he's working 18 hours a day. No, that gobshite is doing four jobs poorly. Yeah, right. Yeah. He has four <laughs> jobs part-time. Yeah. So you're part-time CEO, so, part-time yeah. CTO, part-time. So uh, we're, we're finding our feet now in, in the evolution world. Yeah. And it's amazing. It reminds me of, it's funny, so like we're taking on, well, we took on a lot of stuff, right? Oh, we're, yeah. we're refocusing, right? And it's funny you say that, so it's, it's not the same Irish philosopher, but Ron Swanson, U.S., fictional character he said he goes listen best advice i think he could give he goes never half ass two things whole ass one thing right and so it's like kind of like that so to your point you're like yeah i'm wearing four hats it's like well you're probably not wearing any of them well there right you you're doing a little bit of each one but you need to specialize or maybe do a little better in focusing but my hat's off to you just for one following up with evolution and connecting the dots a lot of people We'll be like, oh man, can you imagine if evolution took my, you know, my technology yeah. stuff? And then they leave it at that. Yeah. But you followed up. You went back to the product managers. You said, ah, that didn't work. Then you went back to Kevin Sweet, and then you made it happen. So, yeah, you got to make your own dreams come true. So my hats off to you for that. Literally, 
I, for my entire life, no one's ever handed me anything. Yeah. Literally. Yeah, no one will ever hand anyone well, anything. That's especially ever. more and more future for yeah. you, for sure. But it's amazing that entitlement culture comes into a lot of large companies that become institutionalized. Yeah. Because guys get it. They're in their lane and kind of keep their head below the parapet and they say, I'll get my job done, tick a box at the end of the week and go home. Yep. Those days are well and truly gone because you get found out now because if you're, yes. if you have a transparent <laughs> culture that's accountable, then, you know, stuff's got to happen. A, B, C. No, you're not looking to literally reinvent the wheel, excuse the pun. <laughs> I had <laughs> never reinvented the wheel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Nice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Home team. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm going to mention that about 50 more times. Perfect. But if, if, if people become that complacent, then they don't care. But thankfully, I find everybody, my own team in particular, but everybody care enough not to let each other fail. That sounds a little corny, yeah. but if something is starting to slip a little bit, I said, hey, what can we do to cumulatively get us to where we want to be? Because our ambition is is insane. We are going to see a digital in every casino on the planet. We literally are. And some of the stuff is just amazing for the e-game show that we actually got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did did they buy this the the I mean the licenses from you or the, the, the whole company the technology? Yeah, yeah. Lock, stock and barrel consumed us. Which is which <laughs> Which, by the way, yeah. but that was, that's a very unusual step for a company. Now, I'm not an insider, so I, sure. I, I have no ability to talk to the, the, yeah, yeah. the major yeah, group. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're, we're like, uh, <laughs> I think the expression is, when you look at an evolution, which is a multi-billion, I don't know, it's like a 30 billion yeah, dollar it's market. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just ridiculous. So, uh, you know, bigger than the top five of other vendors combined. So it's insane when you think about it. But... The 800 pound gorilla, we're, we're not even a hair on the ass of that 800 pound gorilla. And we're, and we're nice. only an experiment. We're yeah, just, yeah. we're like a little project in the corner. Do that and, and let's see what you do. But they also will use our technology themselves, but indulge there, guys. So we, we've something land-based for the first time, but we're like, I said, I said we're like the red-headed kid in the corner. Yeah. Nobody knows what to do with us, what to say with us, but that's fine. Let us do our thing. And we've just finished ice and while everybody was wondering how the ice would be, it was phenomenal for yeah, us. Right. It was amazing. Hmm. I, I asked you that question uh, because I'm I'm curious. So evolution is traditionally more in the uh, iGaming online yeah. space, right? And I was curious how your technology could help benefit land-based casinos. Because more in the U.S., you know, we have a thousand casinos in the U.S. I don't know the total number. I think it's nine hundred something. Roughly that, yeah, it's like nine fifty, but yeah, um, come on, Hey, that was pretty good there. I'm usually off on my numbers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm curious how you, how your technology could help land-based casinos for such things as like maybe a slot machine using a wheel or even like a table game and a progressive sure. system using your wheel. So are they going to try to like pivot into that market or could your technology still help benefit that market? Well, the, kind good, of an interesting the good thing about evolution is that they've left us alone. Yeah, yeah. It's not it's not part of a grander plan for evolution. We're literally that little sidebar project. You mm. do what you do and report back to us every now and then. Or mm. if you need money, just write yeah. your I heard I heard described once I'm writing a dear daddy letter and I'm going, What the hell's a dear yeah. daddy letter? <laughs> dear daddy, can I have some money? Please? I burned my allowance, I need more. <laughs> yeah, please, uh, please reload. But yeah. but and and I'm being facetious because yeah, sure. they have literally empowered us. Whatever you guys need to be a success, let us know what we can do. And that's an amazing kind of open road that you got in front of you. Yeah. Yeah. From a technology point of view, we can, uh, right out the bat, any wheel game ever created. Yeah. And then people automatically think, we think, oh, big six, oh, gee. And start rolling their eyes. Yeah, that's kind yeah. of a softer side of game. And, you know, people will spend a couple of bucks at it, but it'll be at the entrance or exit to a casino. But now it's a device that can watch Monday Night Football on the center of the screen while the wheel is rotating. And that center image doesn't rotate with the wheel. That was one of the big things about our tech. So you can spin the wheel and let a game play, multiple games play, roulette style games, promotional games, big six style games, but with bonuses, with add-ons, with, with interactive features yeah. that make it more exciting because yeah. there's nothing more boring than a spinning wheel after like five minutes. You kind of, oh, you, you, everyone's sure. got that well, carnival. Big, hey, you mentioned fantastic. big six. That's exactly right. I mean, I was at Interblock years ago and it was like, we had a great deployment of big six. Like if you wanted it, it was good. But then the game itself, you're like, all right, again with the shit. Like <laughs> how many times are you going to bet two and then spin it again? Like, it's and just how many bit. can you add? It's well, one. Yeah. Maybe. It's one. Per yeah. But like, so, okay. So in your, in your uh, product, so uh, maybe I misunderstood. So you, it's not all digital. So you have a digital center and then an actual still physical wheel that spins or is it both? Or like no, no, describe the, so the actual thing. We're, it's we're, a we're physical doing. wheel that spins. Okay. 
but the wheel center itself, the wheel center is two meters wide, by the yeah, way, yeah. is a HD screen. <laughs> <laughs> so the wheel, wheel's as wide as I am, because I'm six feet tall, it's oh, roughly two yeah, meters. Yeah, yeah. If we stood you in front of you, you'd be like the Vitruvian man in yeah, front of that wheel. So it's, <laughs> yeah, perfect. Uh, it's it's a, it's a obviously very impactful to see a two yeah. meter circular screen rotate. So you're seeing a two meter wheel rotate, but that entire two meters is a HD screen. Oh, interesting. So we put the game on the outside are yeah. multiple games. We can have one, two, three, four games. Oh, so it's an HD wheel, but that spins. Correct. So, so then the graphics spins. has to spin. How'd you do that? Because like, <laughs> I mean, well, think about it. Like, here's what I'm saying. So, so if you have a regular wheel with all the, whatever you want to call it, pie pieces of like your credits that you win or whatever the prizes yeah. are, that spins and it's Wheel of Fortune, right? It just spins around and there you go. But now you're saying that's digital. And the thing physically, so I guess the the images are still, and then Correct. the wheel spins anyway. All right, so it's not like a bearing in the middle. And it took me a second to LCD. catch up to you guys. Sorry, I'll I was a little few steps behind. Massively oversimplified yeah. and say, yeah, there's a bearing in the middle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I did it. Landon well, likes to pretend he's all things our guests are. So an engineer today, he'll be. Sometimes he's a math guy. You never know. I'm always a math leadership guy. Leadership consultant. Actually, it was really funny. We had one guy ask us a couple of years ago. He said, "Okay, so you got that wheel turning. So there's power going into the back if that turns." But that cable at the back turns too, right? So that's going to get all... Tw- well, oh, I figured it out. You just tend to turn it the other way and then that cable unravels around and going, here's your sign. <laughs> yeah, Larry, Larry, sure, bud. Larry the cable guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure, he bud. That's like exactly... Yeah, yeah. 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 He was an engineer. Good job. <laughs> oh, man. How weird. So we, the tech we had to bring in, obviously, we, we know where the wheel is at all times. What's displayed on it is actually a, irrelevant to us. Yeah. We know where it is. We measure 4,096 points around that wheel. Wow. So we know where it is, what it's doing, when it's doing the speed direction. And um, the good thing about it is that it can be class two or class three because mm. it's its own RNG. When you have a human activated and gravity stop device, it's that works yeah. you can have bingo style games. So the big six game, you see the six bets that are on it. We launched that ice Dreamcatcher, which is one of the most successful evolution games ever hmm. online. And now we've got a land based version of it. We've got a, a table version, casino table version and a terminal version. Now we, we call them our e game show suite. So we have a standalone wheel that's kind of promotional. So if you wanted to just put like um, a plinth with a big red button in front of yeah, it right. and have, yeah. have somebody swipe their loyalty card and hey, up they, pops their, yeah. go, their goal level customer. It's a goal game pops up on screen oh, interesting. and those 54 segments are 27 or 9 or 3 segments are gold level customer mm, interesting. but if you have a silver customer it's a silver game and then you could have bonuses tiered so having a platform of a wheel that can change interactively so you know 5 terminals I want to play a roulette variant game I want to play a big 6 multiplier with double shot and triple shot mm. which, which means you have multiple bets up to a million to one chances to win so it, it's insane and then we're bringing in evolution style multipliers so when the wheel spins it goes bang 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 these 10 segments are now 7 times 20 yeah, times right, right. 50 times so now it's a hell of a lot more along a slot genre but that's why we say e-game show because evolution success online has been hosted games live games yeah, right. that are just excellent and to be able to bring that to a, a land-based casino and, and because it's a wheel we're not cannibalizing existing revenue I, I hate the term stadium gaming because stadium games just to me they look like an industrial canteen rows and rows yeah, of yeah, right. impersonal soulless why can't it be a lounge why can't it be where someone interacts differently with a different style of game instead of cannibalizing roulette craps blackjack why can't you have something new Something that's yeah. genuinely attractive. But is that just a configuration thing? So you're saying, look, you have whatever the, the wheel and then the screens for the other outcomes. And now instead of it being, to your point, like soulless rows, like you're in a grocery store or movie theater, you're going, well, we've just designed those into four pots so that we three can actually be chatting with each other and doing it that way. Or how would you yeah, that's, redeploy? That's that yeah, lounge yeah. kind of format. Yeah, yeah. So why, why can't you walk into a regular bar where there's, there's a pedestal? And, and why does it have to be a large screen? Why does the form factor have to be what it is on a game? Yeah, sure. Why can't it be on their phone, geofence to the location? Why can't it be on a table? Why can't it yeah. be table and terminals, but they're in little pods of, of community and yeah, social yeah, gaming? Interesting. I, I laugh because we, we go back five to ten years and everybody was talking about these uh, skill-based style games to try to tackle <laughs> yeah. like the... Slapjack. Yeah, that stuff. No, yeah. no, no, even like first-person shooter oh, games, yeah, yeah, driving yeah. games, and they're spending millions of dollars in R&D on these skill-based style games, right? Well, fast forward to now, today, and you're starting to see these skill-based games starting to come into play, but it's not what anyone thought it was almost like right in front of our eyes they're more of these carnival style games you've got the claw that grabs oh, you know like different like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you got coin pushers you've got these big wheel style carnival games that are actually having some success but it wasn't the 
first person shooter games or the driving games and you're starting to see skill base actually start to come into play a little bit. It's kind of interesting. No, you're not wrong. And I think what it is, is it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So fun like what's, what's funny is when games. you translate as a kid yeah, and yeah. you go, I'm going to pump quarters in and try to knock them off. It's fun. Right. Yeah. And you're, you get on the edge, literally on the edge of your thing, but you're going, Oh man, I was this close to 27 quarters or whatever. <laughs> <right>? Like, <clears throat> so it translates as an adult. But I feel like, and so that's what you've done. Well, like to your point about some of the wheel style that evolution does, it's like, yeah, it's roulette, but all of a sudden it's roulette with like multipliers or it's roulette with like a new colored ball or it's roulette with all these. And you're like, okay, so you've taken something and made it more fun. So I already am sold on this idea of wheel style outcomes or or whatever, but now I've added this gamified over the top and I'm like, now I'm in. Right. So I can't wait till you go into a casino and they have like the teddy bears with the little water squirters and, <laughs> and you have all your friends trying to squirt the little thing up to win a prize that's coming. Yeah. The little roll thing words. where the horse goes across. All right. We digress. Let's roll. Big time. Well, that, that just to finish asking the actual question that you asked, so that, that's just us with the wheel. But the natural progression is, is, is a smaller wheel, a one meter wheel that sits at the end of a pit. So yeah. instead mm. of that side bet for that 250K progressive, that's now the spin the wheel. Mm. And that's a million dollar spin or it's a multi-tiered game or yeah. our different concentric circles on that digital wheel allows you to do whatever the heck you want. But you bring that showmanship into it. You bring yeah. Instead of having that stayed old tired. And I don't mean this because I'm in this industry a long time and I, I, I love every facet of this yeah. industry. But seeing something new, something that's going to draw your eye, something that's going to have a crowd of people. It's that carnival from childhood mentality, yeah. it's that community, social gaming thing. Yep. People just mm. haven't got that right yet in the land based space. So we look forward to showing people it very soon. How to get around. Keep it simple, stupid. Yeah. We know the model. That's Math Guy Jones knows advice. the model. <laughs> Engineer Jones easy. knows the model. You know what I mean? You're cranking. I love this conversation. This Me is too. interesting. All right, so totally shifting gears here. So because I was excited about this yesterday, <clears throat> I learned you're from Cork, Ireland. Yes. Cork is in wine bottle cork, scotch bottle cork. For anyone that's not familiar, because I only heard about History this town. Guy <clears throat> no, yeah, geographic geography uh, guy. Anyway, so I heard about this town for the first time five days earlier on a separate podcast because I was listening to a podcast <laughs> with uh, Mr. Killian Murphy, Mr. Peaky Blinders himself, and he's I just talking. That. He's like, "Yeah, I'm Irish." This whole thing. He goes, "I'm from Cork, Ireland." I go, "Never heard of it." But that's pretty. <laughs> must be a pretty cool town if like this guy lives there. And then literally four days later, you're like, "I'm from Cork, Ireland." So. How's Cork, Ireland treating you? I mean, it's where you're from. You ever run into Thomas uh, Thomas Shelby, because Killian Murphy himself? Yeah, or you not? know, the celebs are lucky if they meet yeah. me in Cork. That's it. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know how big Cork is. Like, I have no perspective it's, on this. It's, it's about a half a million people. It's on the <coughs> south coast. Decent size, yeah. Second city with that second city syndrome of any country. And, um, yeah, like everybody else, me, celeb, anyone else, they, like any small town, they don't you know, let you forget where you came from. So yeah, right. if Kelly Murphy's walking down the street, and, and we have quite a few celebs, by the way. I'm sure. And, yeah. and if they walk down the street, it's a, hey, look at him. I remember you and you were a snot nose. Yeah, you're so getting your butt kicked at the elementary school. Don't lose the run school. yourself yeah, there, yeah. buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's great. And, and, uh, and you know, we, we, culturally, we're obviously a very old country. Yeah, America, right. And, you know, Blarney Castle is five miles from... Oh, America. interesting. That's yeah, in Cork. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we obviously have a massive Jameson distillery, which I know you're going to talk about in yeah, a second. Just a um, but we also have like one of the, I think I have five PGA standard golf courses within 50 oh, minutes wow. where I live. No so way. I mean, it's golfing Ireland. So, so how's your game? It is just shy of brutal. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, I'm still allowed to play the courses, but I'm not setting any records. That's kind of my that's, game. Yeah, that sounds I was going to say, you're a normal right golfer. Me. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's when you have the greenskeepers falling around, they're going, what holes yeah, yeah. is he going to dig in the course <laughs> yeah. this time around, right? You bring a shovel or is that a seven iron? I'm not sure based on what you're leaving behind. Uh, no, but you're right. So we, we uh, you mentioned earlier, hey, we somehow cosmically helped you guys connect. Yeah. We take no credit for that. Uh, and no thanks is required for us, but... You thanked us anyway, and so you brought us this uh, this pretty cool. I don't know how we show this. You want to hold it up, man? Uh, this very I'm cool like bottle right of whiskey. Here. Well, you're better at it than me. And uh, <laughs> so Middleton, very rare. You said this is like a Jameson distillery, but it's kind of a, a separate, kind of maybe lesser known uh, deal from Ireland. So it's an authentic Irish whiskey here. It sure is. And this that, is, that is rare, in yeah. fairness. It's it's, uh, and I hope you guys enjoy. It. Oh, and we I do will. want we you to, to taste it, but do not. Don't do mix not, it. Don't do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sacrilege. Just straight in the glass. Mentioning mixing. Into the, yeah, yeah. So maybe a ball of ice yeah. and a little drop, and that'll that's like mother's milk. Oh, but that, that's that's particularly uh, of import to me. I have a lot of value in that because I did want to show appreciation for you guys. Mate, yeah, I, I don't even want to open it. 
We're gonna open. Well, we're you gonna have open two. So I was gonna say, open you one, two and, of them, so and, and keep one, keep one on display. But yeah, that's but that's uh, Middleton is a town, a uh, smaller town, uh, kind of in satellite Cork, town yeah. of Cork, and um, it's a Jameson distillery there from the 1700s, and it's it's pretty cool. And that's a Barry Crockett is the the head distiller down there, and that's one of his own blends. So it's, yeah. And it is a very rare, so enjoy, guys. Yeah, we plan to, and like I said, we... Uh, Don't plan to work the following day, as well. That's okay, yeah. <laughs> I've been known to do that. I can't tell you how many times in my life I've had a new bottle with a friend, right? And you just go, hey, let's have a drink. We're just going to hang, hang out and chat. And then all of a sudden you go, where'd the bottle? How's it? How'd we drain that old bottle? And then you're just like, yeah, and the next day, my wife always rolls her eyes. She's like, you did it again, did you? Yep, I don't know what to tell you. I'll be well, sleeping all day. You'll notice about Irish whiskey, guys, you're going to enjoy it so much. You're going to, you know, the, the blarney, as we yeah. call it, is going to, you're going to start singing a little bit. And then you realize that your your legs are drunk. You're, you're still communicating <laughs> until you try to stand up. Yeah, and then you're like, whoops. So this is a J- Jameson? It's a Jameson distillery. Product. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Except for, yeah, you know it's a good bottle of whiskey when it says right on the case, a very rare yeah. from uh-huh. the actual source. Yeah. I know, it's cool. I'm excited. I'm like I said, excited. no thanks. I mean, for us, like when we started the show, we were just two guys. You were at, we were talking about it before. We just thought it'd be fun to do. We were like, hey, this wouldn't it be cool to chat with people. I mean, a little self-interest going in. Maybe our brands in the industry will elevate. People will hear about us. We're just two knuckleheads from the Western U.S. And now here we are chatting with people from Ireland and people from Europe and Australia. Like, we've met so many cool people. We're still two knuckleheads. <laughs> that hasn't changed. I hope it never changes, actually. Like, because there's some, there's some advantages to that. I feel like when you're just like, I don't know. I'm just going, what do you think? Like, and when you're like the, when you're not supposed to be the smartest guy in the room, there's a little freedom to that, I feel like. Right. But. What's fun about it is I hope everybody has that story. Maybe not everybody does a business deal, but I would love, and and that's one of the feedback I think we get from a lot of the guests is like, I did the show and so many people reached out, right? Like they just go, hey, I never heard of John before. He's been doing his thing in a parallel world of gaming and now I want to make a connection. And we've heard, you know, different CEOs go, yeah, I got some interesting outreach. Some people have found mentors or mentees or, you know, it sounds like business deals here. So like that's for us is what, this is so cool. Like that's an unintended benefit of us doing it and, like I said, no thanks necessary. We're grateful that you that you thanked us. But I, I, I'm delighted just to be here, guys. And, yeah, and genuinely, yeah. I, I wanted to thank you from a long time back. And I'm oh, delighted yeah. to get the this pandemic out in the way. And, yeah, and yeah. Uh, also wanted to bring a bit more representation of Irish. You've got lots of Aussies on here. Yeah, You've exactly. Had, uh, <laughs> well, I was laughing because we were talking earlier. I said, you know, the, I, I love the Irish. We both like trace back most of our like, you know, spit swab DNA to Ireland. So I laugh because yeah. I'm like, I'm about as Irish as anyone who's never been there. Right. But like, <laughs> but, but it's just in the thing that that's where I'm from. So I'm like, no, one. I, I feel weird claiming it. Well, you're getting an official invitation. Yeah, guys. You've got no wait. excuse. You got to come over and, 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 and I mean this with no disrespect. I love the US. I lived yeah. there in the early nineties. I, I love everything about the US and I can't wait to actually come back and spend an awful lot more time. You guys got to come to our parts of the world. It's yeah. just different. It's the same industry. Yeah. But there's so many different pockets and clusters of excellence in different areas of the industry. Just come and, and see it. And you know, there, there's guys that do what you do over there, but you guys have a larger audience because you've kind mm. of economy of scale yeah, over right. here. Um, but you got to get exposed to it. But you'll start in Ireland. Now you might finish. Yeah, right. You I might finish in Ireland, not go any further by yeah. <laughs> well, Ireland, Scotland are like the two I want to hit at yeah, some point. I was going to say, I would love to go out there and destroy some golf courses with you. <laughs> Just go five PGA quality courses. That will be... Uh, or not PGA quality not after, after we, we get done hacking. Well, the, one, the one we're definitely going to do, guys, is the old head of Kinsale. Look it up. Every old every hole is a yeah. signature hole. I, oh, I had beautiful. Sean O'Connor, the chairman of the Atlantic Lottery Corporation, playing over the years ago, and it was almost a religious experience. Oh, wow. Obviously, with a name like Sean O'Connor, he's got some connections yeah, to sure, the, sure. the old sod. Yeah. And uh, it was amazing. And it was a fantastic event, and, and I hope to bring many more industry people to our parts of the world so I can dig holes in that golf course as much as any other one. <laughs> I love the rabbit, the old sod. It's just so such a grass island. We, we've talked about where you're from and kind of what you're doing sure. today. How did you get into gaming? Because I always oh. feel like those yeah, stories well, yeah, are super true. fascinating. <laughs> I, I always said I'd have to come up with a clever way to say that it was, you know, it was meant to be. No, no, it was, but it was an accident. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's actually accident. more. True. That's almost how I know you're meant to be because everyone we've talked to that's doing big things in game, like I don't know, it was an accident. One guy I think who was like a legacy. It was like my dad was a big deal, so now I'm doing it. But everyone else is right. Like, Noah. Uh, well, I guess Noah, and then now you can put me on the spot. God, what was his that's name? Good. Um, the mob, mobs and horses. Aaron Gomes. Oh, Aaron Gomes. Yeah. And so it was like that guy. His dad was a big deal in yeah, Vegas, yeah. and he obviously now is super successful, just sold his company. And so, yeah. um, but most people, it's an accident. I don't know. I woke up, somebody told me I should do it and here we go. So I, I actually had a, a part-time job when I was in college in my very mediocre early days studying applied physics in a, like a family entertainment center. And there was a small gambling section of it, which mm. fascinated me. Yeah. But I, I was coming from the engineering point of view, how all that stuff works. Right. 
So I then, why I became self-employed so early in life was that I spent a little time in the US with guys that wanted to set up these type of facilities and a little experiment that, that allowed me foster a bit of an entrepreneurial spirit. Why I love the US so much, you don't care how old someone is, their color, creed, sex, race, anything. It doesn't matter. If you're good enough to do it, Fill your boots. The American dream. It is what it is. And, I, and it's cliche a little bit, but yeah. it's amazing how suppressed that can be in certain cultures. Mm -hmm. No, no. Yeah. Just go out and get a job. Well, you do yeah. an honest day's work for an honest day's pay, and, and, yeah. and then you'll yeah. be, you know. And you're set. That's it. Yeah. Uh, just never sat with me. So I started looking in the very early days of coin-operated computing, because I was looking at gambling machines that were like, tens of thousands. I mean, they were really expensive in the 90s. And yeah. you, you do a repair in one of these things and one of these proprietary boards that come out of it yep. is like a 4,000 euro, 4,000 pound repair back in the time. Yeah, so wow. multi-thousand. And how can, hang on a second, huh? should be just a computer. <laughs> Show you my age. You can just put a CD into this computer <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. and just change the program. Just right. instead of changing multi-thousand pound boards, change the CD and it's a different yeah. game. And I thought, coin-operated computing is the way to go with this. So I started dabbling around with that, uh, and I ended up producing the world's first multimedia payphone back in the 90s, which was a spectacular failure. So, <laughs> so was, what does that even mean, multimedia payphone? Like it's like a video so you, phone that you pay for? I mean, you guys are old enough to remember payphones. Sure. Yeah, I remember payphone, uh, yeah. but I don't remember this multimedia. This a payphone with a screen. Oh, so okay, in yeah. the early days of the internet, it wasn't as, as ubiquitous as it is now. Yeah, sure. No homes had it. So yeah. if you could go to a payphone and, and send a, a text message to the few people that had mobile, phones yeah, right. yeah, yeah. or send a, an email yeah most people didn't have an email yeah, just right. who the hell you're going to send it to but our video email how cool was that we were like 20 years Geeking. into the future yeah, 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 with this right. stuff. <sighs> but we were ahead of time and, and a, a bit of naivety i guess but i i got a baptism of fire in in corporate finance because it raised capital for doing it in in corporate culture and running a company and, and i'm this 20 something snot nosed kid from cork in ireland but and it wasn't naivety it was just a pure drive and ambition to better myself better yeah. my lot and get it until you meet it you know you meet a brick wall and and you, you mentioned earlier about guys that come up with amazing stuff and they don't get to realize it you got to run into a lot of parked cars and a lot of brick walls before one of them will open up and and mm. it's it's never stop ever 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 and it not everybody's cut out for it it's not not everybody's fit for it you guys have made the leap so absolute kudos to you this is a tough thing to do you guys have walked away from you know your salary is guaranteed every month but when you go to the point where you got young kids and you literally don't know where the money's coming from the end of the next month not everybody can do that have that type of insecurity it does grow you it gives yeah. you some scars <laughs> yeah. it gives you some you know good side some bad side but I, I wouldn't change a bit of it so when my beautiful long-suffering wife uh recalls <laughs> some of those yeah i know how she hasn't kicked me out in 30 years ago. anyway as she said uh, someone i think said to me 30 years i mean she'd have got 20 for manslaughter she'd have it out in 10. yeah <laughs> <laughs> she, yeah she, that's it so god bless her she's still there hopefully enjoying some modicum of success we have now but we're, we're only warming up i, I I don't know what I'm going to be when I grow up. So we're still working on that. And, and I'm going to be hitting a lot of brick walls until we go to the next one. But people should never stop doing what they're doing. So my spectacular failure armed me with an awful lot of, I mentioned earlier, useless information. Yeah. And then somebody asked me, hey, can you help us out here? And this is really where I started in the gambling industry proper. Because yeah. I was always working on it from college days right through and looking at the tech here in the US back at home. A brief sojourn into telecoms only because there was more money in it. Because yeah, right. gambling was almost, I come from Catholic repressed Ireland. Yeah, right, right. Where, yeah. You know, there was no such thing as sex. Gambling is absolute no, no, but you can drink yourself to death, whatever you want. Yeah. Right. <laughs> if you're betting, make sure it's in a. No one, no one knows somewhere. about it. Yeah, yeah. Well, our laws up to very recently, like oh, really? the sports betting, a bookmakers, they were literally allowed to have a doorway with the word bookmaker over it. No advertising, no, mm. no promotions, no nothing. Yeah, but that wasn't was some of the biggest bookmakers in the world come from Ireland? Absolutely. Right? Yeah, I mean, like, well, was I mean, it Ladbrokes or some of the well, I don't know if you that's... You look at Flutter now. That's, yeah, Flutter. Oh, that's Irish. It's Paddy Parr. Yeah, that's right, Paddy, Paddy Parr. Paddy yeah, Parr yeah, yeah. and Betfair, and eventually growth is now global behemoth. Yeah, but that's right. Yeah, there's an Irish stamp over an awful lot of this. So the nursery yeah. of the nursery of sports betting talent is literally scattered. You're going to go anywhere, you're going to find a, a rich vein of Irish guys running through it. Just listen to the cursing, because, you know, I, 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 I apologize to you guys in advance okay. coming on, because I'm going to curse a lot in this thing, because any Irish Please guy that do. doesn't curse <laughs> is a mute. So. Yeah, that, <laughs> That if you ever want to hear the Irish guy in the office, you're going to hear, fuck it, fuck yeah. it, fuck it. But, the guy who found him, yeah, he's over yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's an important meeting he's in, obviously. Okay, so before you jump into the rest of that, sorry, can you teach us an Irish curse? 
Ooh. Is there something that we could say oh that obviously God. YouTube wouldn't flag, but that we would go, oh, we, we could say that. Too. <laughs> well, the easiest and most pleasant one, which could, uh, it could also be almost a term of endearment, but it can be insulting as the wonderful Irish way of doing it is, is the intonation. But it's an easy one as Pog Mahon. Pog Mahon. Pog Mahon. Pog Mahon. Sounds pretty innocent. Yeah, Sounds absolutely. good. What does it mean? What do we just say to everybody listening? Because <laughs> they're all listening going, okay, now what? I'm not telling you. Wait till YouTube ban your guys. Okay, <laughs> got it. Yeah, yeah. You're like, and we're, we're out of Irish. No, it's it's actually one of the more polite ones. It's actually kiss my ass. Oh, okay, good. But it, at one point in time, that would have been extremely insulting. Got Where, it. Whereas now, we use fuck as the Typical. most, yeah, the yeah, most yeah. versatile word Typical, in, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in the language back at home. And um, so that's probably the most polite one. I, it gets nasty after that. I'm sure. Term. Yeah, I can only imagine. We, we need to be halfway through that bottle yeah, before yeah, yeah. I'm And probably not on mics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's it. So Pog Mahone is, is a regular one. And it can be insulting. It can be Pog Mahone or it can be Pog Mahone. Yeah, yeah like funny. Know, yeah, just like, the, just like the translated version. That Absolutely. So, <laughs> I'm just laughing because I'm thinking about like the different terms in different countries and how different they are. Can we title the episode that? And no one will actually know what I mean. I remember I went... And studied abroad in Australia, yeah. right? And so my mate and I, 21 years old, right out of the saddle, get to get to Australia. And the taxi guy gets in the car. He's like, where are you from? We're like, oh, America, you know, Vegas. And he goes, oh, you American cunts, huh? And I go, whoa, <laughs> bro, he just called us cunts. can't, can't like, say that. We're going to yeah. be fighting after that. Like, this guy fucking hates us. <laughs> yeah. And he just, it was just an endearing term. He's like, no, that's just how it goes. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's like, so hey, funny. welcome to Australia. It's, it's funny how it translates so. different, right? Because over yeah. here, it's like, to your point, them, that's war. Yeah, you don't right? say like, that word. You don't say it to anyone, really. Yeah. Certainly not women, right? Yeah. And it's just like, okay, that's the last word you should ever say down there it's like hey boys you know it's like just no different than like yeah hey boy welcome to oz but again Uh, someone calls you that in ireland that could be a term of endearment especially you know (laughs) buying you a beer come in here you're good yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like okay yeah never know that's why that's why i feel like inflection is everything because you look at the guy and go i don't know he's smiling he seems generally happy he's probably probably just busting my balls a little bit right (laughs) whatever that thing is it may be nerdy but it's not terrible the versus when he's like scowling at you, giving you the mean mug. You go, okay, I got to watch that guy. I don't, know, he, you know, I don't know what he's saying, but I got to keep my eye on him. Cause. We slag and joke the Australians because of their bastardization of the language, but we, we've brutalized it more than anybody as well. But we yeah. keep telling the Australians, but you're just the convicts we sent away back in the 1800s, right? You're yeah. the family. Someone stole a loaf of bread, send them off to Van Diemen's land. <laughs> <in Australia. laughs> so that's, uh, that's literally where they've all went. So I, I, uh, I, sh- I know I take the piss out of a lot of the Aussie guys in the industry way too much about that one because they're now cultured so <laughs> no. uh, yeah dude. exactly <laughs> you know i knew ne- i was nearly serious through the whole yeah, sentence like, right? look at you uh, so God. so we yeah we talk about you being in, coming you know from europe obviously ireland and all these little microcosms of little gaming companies all around right what do you see the biggest opportunity is for the u.s gaming market with some of those microcosms coming over to our space yeah, like what are we about to learn yeah yeah um I guess, I, I, I mean, I'm coming back to where I am and where I'm living right yeah. now, and that's the whole e-game show concept. It's it's making entertainment a bigger part of it. Right. Because how many more times do we have to listen to a Link variant? Or, and I, I'm not, I'm not going to mention any brands because there is some yeah. incredible right. product come out there, but how many times can you vary a slot machine? So now I'm seeing slot machines and now... 12, 15 foot tall and they've got lights that, uh, you guys remember that show Ready Player One, right? Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, yeah. Remember the guy who's talking about, it. he said, we can get 40% more advertising on screen before we induce fits or nausea. Yeah, or right, right. It's kind of like ever just bigger, but casinos don't want that. Casinos don't want you stealing the eye line and, and they want to manipulate, and yeah. well, manipulate is the wrong term. They want to maximize it, yeah. the flow of their people through it for, for the best experience in their venue. And, and I keep talking to people an awful lot about their product and, the product is actually the fourth thing that anybody should think of. So when you're yeah. thinking of the top five things you should be thinking of when I'm, I'm doing a casino, any idiot can populate a slop floor. Just dump a load of stuff on it. What works stays. What doesn't work, peel it off, put in something new. And over time, you'll refine it. Yeah. But for me, it's, it's the environment, the experience, and the service. So if the environment is good enough to attract what you want to attract, you know, if it's going to be a clean, warm, dry, it's going to be welcoming. There's about 75 touch points in every gambling facility on the planet. Yeah. The first 40 of those are before people even enter the premises. Mm. Where am I going to go tonight? How am I going to do it? How am I going to get there? And um, so a lot of the decision-making process up to the point of transaction have to be considered. I know this is the consultant coming up. That's yeah. right. <laughs> Consult us. Yeah, that's so good. It, it's when you have those kind of 30 odd um, inflection points where people decide, right, I'm going to this casino and then they walk in the door and they got about another dozen before they actually transact, before mm-hmm. they spend any money. You know, where can I go? Where can I sit? And 
every, the human nature for everyone is when you walk into a new venue, you look for an anchor position, you look for a seat or a place I can just to get my bearings to see yeah. what's going on. So if they find something that's welcoming, inviting, it's signage is appropriate, there's smiling uh, staff, and then people feel that, and that's all that subliminal influence that I'm now transacting. So yeah. that's the environment, right? The experience bit is while they're there. So it right. is a positive experience, it is genuinely entertaining, uh, and that keeps that positive vibe going and I know we can go through the science of slots you know given the, the pleasure hormones and, and the release and the failure and the blah 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 and then you get to the service I want to make sure there's a cocktail waitress looking after me that if I go yeah. to a restaurant it's quick and I'm not going to be interfered I'm going to enjoy it on my terms so now we've got the environment the experience and the service now you have the product so what do people want to do so yeah. slots are fine that's a and I think it's six percent of the adult population are regular machines players that's a small slice yeah that's in our part of the world I don't know specifically what it is here but I know for Lot sure than that. I don't know if it is I a mean, regular knows, machine yeah. player that their regular entertainment activity is playing slots not that they've done oh, it not okay, that they do it sense. not that they have done it right, right, but right, that this right. is who they are yeah. like as so their this, this is tier their card yeah. outlet. bungee cord right yeah um, Interesting. But equally, then in our part of the world, you look at nearly 50% of the population will be regular lottery players, which mm. you guys wow. don't have here. So, and then you'd have, I think it's somewhere between 12 and 18% are regular bookies or sports betting. Hmm. So it, it, it depends on the genre. Right. But and this is kind of Irish based, like the. Like well, that's, math, that's actually European. So oh, I've been, Europe I've been consulting yeah, yeah, yeah. for the North America, right across Europe, through Eastern Europe, and, and heading towards Australasia. So I'm getting a good flavor. Like I said, I'm a wealth of useless information. So, <laughs> so well, this is great information. I'm just trying to think, like, this is amazing. Well, look, we have an industry that's heading towards like $500 billion, and, and we look at the online space, which is about 18, 19% of that right now. It's like growing. 95 to 100. But it's growing. Yeah. Um, but like 80% of the industry is still, of that $500 billion is still in the physical, in the, yeah, yeah, yeah. In yeah. the physical world. So um, th there's a lot to do to amend the environment, experience, the service, and then to a product. So what do they want? Of course, there's, there's differing influences. We're in a digital world now. So how do you make it entertaining uh, that they can interact with it and not just sit there and... I suppose, blindly consume, that there is a positive interaction, to feel like there's an outcome, that the, and the whole experience is a lot more than people expect today. Because you guys live your lives on phone. Yeah. Right. Uh, well, we all do, to be fair now, but I remember a time when it was announced that phones had surpassed computers as, from a sales point of view. Yeah. That, and people are now consuming entertainment, news, on this physical device. You guys ever get to go to China, and you live in your WeChat app, so everything, mm. your, your payment, your, your Facebooks, yeah. your, your Twitters are all in that one app. Mm. And every store you go to has got a little WeChat store and they've got a little QR code on their desk and you pay for a product there, a, a digital economy. Yeah, if true. the Chinese ever got their shit together, we're all in trouble, but thankfully, <laughs> that. Um, Fair enough, yeah. But, um, so when we look at where the industry is going as a result, that's why I'm so passionate about this whole kind of and it's, maybe it's a little cheesy to call it an e-game show concept, but it just identifies a genre that's not stadium gaming or it's not electronic gaming or it's not advanced slot player or it's not a, another button or a widgety bit on felt. Or there's not some, you know, we, we have a table that has got screens on the felt because mm. if, you, if you're playing Dreamcatcher on DigiWheel and you're playing it on a table and it's got two massive screens on it where you literally place your bet like a traditional felt, but then someone else, hey, I want to play Crazy Time. Or I want to play your um, lightning variant games. Yeah, right. No problem. Dealer pushes a button. That's the new game up. Place your bets. And that's why the digital platform brings that interactivity, but also gives a choice at a venue. It, it's a true platform. I I'm, I'm want to avoid this whole podcast, avoiding two particular terms, omni-channel and server-based gaming. Because you should <laughs> punch somebody hard in the face if you ever, ever say okay. either two of those two. So I'm in for the punching. Why? Omnichannel. <laughs> Omnichannel was a great idea when I first heard it mooted in the early noughties. You know, we got to have this experience that's universal across all channels. So mobile is getting more prevalent. And back in Europe, you have to remember, we had interactive TV, mobile, a lot of sports betting physical outlets uh, that did nothing else but sports betting on, on every high street in, in the UK and Ireland. So you had, you had lots of avenues to gamble. So, you know, they were looking at user persona. So, hey, a guy leaves his house, he's sitting, he presses the red button on his interactive TV and he's playing roulette or he places a bet and then he just jumps on the bus to head to work, but he just carries on that experience on his mobile phone, goes into work, checks his results. And then I thought, holy shit, this guy's just going to be gambling all day. That's, that's, that's not an omni-channel. Omni-channel was supposed to be a 360-degree view of a customer. So yeah. they know what that customer is and does, when and how, and then they could adapt <clears> accordingly. But 
a guy sitting in a slot is not the same guy sitting in front of his phone. And it's a different experience. When you have a large wide screen and you're interacting and there's the bells and whistles, there's noise, there's a lot of these touch points I've been talking about that are the physical experience. Yeah, right. yeah. Whereas you're online, it's also a more solitary experience. When there's bells and whistles in the casino, everybody's looking around and going, yeah. And it's, yeah, right, they're cheering for you. And that's why that the e-game energy. show community experience is getting more legs. Whereas you're on a phone and uh, you know, even if you're watching these Twitch guys that are streaming it and they're, they're making communities out of it, it's still a relatively solitary experience. Yeah, so you yeah. can't omni-channel an experience for the slot guy with it. Yay! And the quiet guy who just wants to have his quiet entertainment. And that's just two of the channels. <laughs> it's funny, we just went into that entire world. Well, yeah, but I guess my, my question is like, so, but the delivered product is essentially the same. So if you're talking about Dreamcatcher, but, but this right? Is where you draw the line then is your product is essentially the same, but tailor it accordingly. You can't do a mobile phone experience and then expect that to just take that screen and you now just blow it up and put it there. It doesn't work that easily. Yeah. You got to make sure because we notice some things in particular, like, and lots of subliminal things. Yeah, like yeah. I said, I say, I'm, I'm not sure it matters. In my mind, I would have done it the other way. So I would have said, you're taking the bigger version and trying to shrink it to the phone. That may just be semantics. It may not actually matter, but I, I wonder design wise, if you're saying, look, we're going to design this thing to be what you make, which is the two meter wheel. But, and the, the, but the example I'm using is I'm taking a game that I know millions of people have used and has been very yeah. profitable and very successful versus a game that's on couple of hundred, a couple of thousand screens used by tens of thousands of people. I want a couple of million people yeah, in validation right. and I'm going to take that knowing it. Mm. So it, it's hedging our bets for a more successful product, but then tailoring it to the audience. Yeah, so right. whether it is that, well, millennials are heading for 40 now, so we, we, we can't, yeah. you know, it's a whole different conversation for the are old now. Yeah. Well, yeah, they've got yeah. kids now. They've got <laughs> real I'm money like, problems. So. Barely. I'm like at the, the beginning, <laughs> like one of the first classes of millennials. I got kids, the whole thing. Dad, yeah. You know. God, I'd, I'd hate to have kids. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. Years have grown up, so it's a little different. Yeah. Yeah. I have five kids, so it doesn't I'm in the Lego land era, so it's no big deal. I think my, this is the fun part. <laughs> my youngest is 21, box tick, job done, here's punch He's my good. ticket, yeah, I'm yeah. done. Yeah. Um, but so th that's the omni-channel limitation. People focus on let's just universally apply to everyone. It's not that universally applicable. And the same with server-based gaming. The concept was great. Let's just put a box in the corner and feed content. Content mm. is where we all live. Content yeah, is yeah. That's, the that's what people pay for. Yeah. They consume content. They don't give a flying fiddler's flute that there's a <laughs> beautiful computer in the corner and that computer's got, you know, 256 gig of RAM with yeah, right. blood. They don't give a, like I said, but all they want to know is on screen, that experience enhances their environment experience and service. <clears throat> and that product helps all of that. So rinse and repeat. But why should you care? And I, that's why I have a problem with everybody, proprietary technologies, proprietary cabinets. It would be so great if this entire industry just had um, a Microsoft layer or at Windows layer yeah. of yeah, yeah. everything. Because, you know, why are we all doing, like SaaS, thankfully yeah, one of the yeah. most magnificent uh, developments in the industry with an IGT license SaaS out to everyone so we can all have a standard way of interacting with yeah. the currency. Um, but why can't everything be like that? Why can't the method of communication, why, ca why can't it be cross-channel uh, communication from a slot and then, hey, you can hand off from your mobile phone to your computer and vice versa. Why can't I hand off from a slot to my phone and carry on or to uh, my account? What he just said is super interesting <clears throat> and it's coming. And, mm -hmm. and these slot manufacturers really should start paying attention because when you take a company like Evo or even Chumba, which is yeah. still like... Sweepstakes it's like the style, sweepstakes yeah. style game. Those games are so entertaining. They're, I think they're better than a lot of these land-based games. And all of a sudden you get an evolution that puts a box in a casino and I can walk to that box and I can go pick any game I want to play. I can shoot that same game to my phone. No more even like pausing the game so I can go to the bathroom. Screw that. I just take that game right to my phone. I go to the bathroom. I go have dinner at the casino. I'm still playing that same slot machine. And I can play multiple versions of it. I can play it on... I can play that same game on a 45 foot curve or I can play that same game on a, you know, interactive like virtual reality. I can play that same game while I'm, I mean, it's, it's coming. And, and, little and bring 10 of your friends and, and, and let them have little friends. images of them on screen. Hey, oh, let's, yeah. guys, everybody throw 10 bucks and let's all put this together. And you could do, yeah. Man, there's some yeah. amazing stuff coming. Well, and I think, so the answer in my mind is to what, like people, why don't we do that? Because everybody wants a piece of the pie. And it's hard to do that way, right? Because right in now, scenario, well, yeah, but here's the thing. You're going to need, what, one company to come engineer all of that or figure out how you pay for it all? Because what happens is you're going to go, yeah, you know, technically, 
the engineers of the world could probably do that right now. Shoot that game to your phone. Probably, Absolutely. Probably can be done yeah, already. Not, not even but you're missing the point, Mike. No, I'm it, just telling you why it's not happening. I, I agree that it should happen. It's my point. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Like right now, people don't want to play nice with each other. But while they're all paying attention to each other, you've got these big online gaming companies like Evo, like Chumba, that already have an entire plethora, like library of games. They don't need the fuck. They don't need the slot manufacturers. So as soon as they get that, and it's already happening right now, the laws are already yeah. starting to taper. That one day this one box is going to come in, and now everyone's going to be playing that game. Yeah. Lightning Link, Dragon Link. Whatever it is, Fortune, ADA, I yeah. mean, it doesn't matter. It will not even matter because these games are just as entertaining. And now I can offer you a million different opportunities and options. So they can be like, well, well, we'll play nice now. It's like, no, 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 too late. Yeah. Yeah. Too late. Long, long wave come back saying content is king. Yeah. yeah. So it's what people physically consume. And, and I look at Nick Robinson of Big Time Gaming, uh, who I only met for the first time at ICE recently, another um, acquisition of Evolution. Just what they've done with their MegaWays product from a slots point of view. And yeah. that, that was all tested and, and, and worked with from, from their market in, in Australia. But it's, it's literally just, I suppose, the, the, the gambling version of going viral is yeah. the way that product has gone. And you're you're referencing the same thing. It's having a product that essentially goes viral in, in an industry because it's now a digital experience. Yep. But it's a digital experience that a consumer controls. So if you're building cabinets yeah. or if you're building boxes... And you can still build it in brick and mortar on property. Absolutely. Well, and I think That's that it's kicker. more about the whole vibe, right? So I'm laughing because I'm sitting here going, well, we don't want to say server-based or omni-channel, but everything you just described feels like it's on a server and it's on all the channels, so I don't know how we want to label it. But why but is that like, even a thing, though? Why, why, is, why is that even mentioned, the technology? That, that's like talking about engine manufacturers or it's just tire you, Yeah, fair enough, or, but I feel like you, at some point you have to sell it, right? Yeah. And so when you're selling it, you got to tell that story. And you go, well, how are you going to sell the story, right? And so it's like we can argue over the language a little bit, but I think it's what kind of what we're saying. But I think what's interesting to your thing is that what we know is that games come and go. Very few games stand the test of time, right? Right, like, yep. You know, Wheel of Fortune's one that's right. been there forever. Buffalo and all of its variations right. have been there forever. Fortune 88. But like, yeah, 88 Fortunes is now probably in that, in that uh, camp, right? And there's many more online, like, you know, some of these games that you're talking about. But what you're describing, Landon, I feel like is this idea of like, we want to get people or the future of people saying, the game will change. But the concept of TV to phone, to in-person, physical, social experience, back to phone, back to TV, whatever, is what they want. Because this year, it'll be Dreamcatcher from DigiWheel, which is great, and everybody's getting in on that. And then in two years, when that maybe has faded, and I'm sure John's got the next big product, it'll be like, well, now they're gonna do that same ecosystem, but with the next game, or the next suite of games from whoever it is that creates it, right? So it's more about, it's less to me about the game, and more about the idea of sw selling them into this like continuous or multi-threaded, whatever you wanna call it, availability. It's about creating a broader experience, a more like, Robust experience. So imagine even just like Uber Pool. I know this is a weird example. Uber what? Carpools? Or Uber yeah. Carpool. What if I go to the casino and I do Gamble Pool and I've got five of yeah. my friends. We all put a hundred bucks in and every time we spin it, it takes one fifth of my hundred for that button to spin. Uh -huh. Gamble Pool. Yeah. I mean, that's wild. Pretty it's sure every regulator in the world just puckered. Any regulars listening? <laughs> just, just went, Whoa, we can't do that. Don't do that. Man. Just stop talking about that. But it's amazing. But all, it's a good all, idea. All yeah. the tech you're talking about is not gambling tech. No, I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. And everything we're looking at, the light switch, all the simple stuff. And I mean, we, guys, we're doing a wheel. Yeah. I mean, it's not rocket it's, science. No. Well, uh, as really funny as Todd Householder said, it was literally roller coaster technology. So some of the engineering that goes in, it's literally that advanced. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, but we don't even have to talk about it because it's not a feature that will generate any revenue for you. It's not yeah. something that will, I can't go to a casino, uh, a, you know, a table manager or a slots director and say, hey, this is the benefit you'll get. It's roller coaster technology. No, unless it's New York, New so, York. But so for us, roller coaster technology is basic, or is that is that like a way to say, ah, it's pretty simple well, technology? You want to be pretty sure that your roller coaster is going to work all the time. Got it, yeah, yeah. Gonna, you, know? <laughs> you don't want to get flipped off. Through. Got it, okay, fair enough. So there's a lot of sensors. There's a lot of knowing exactly what's happening at all yeah, times. Right, right. And then feed the consumable product, which sure. is the experience yeah, of right. the roller coaster. It's not the seat you're sitting in. Yeah, right. It, it, it's the experience. It doesn't matter getting. to me if the roller coaster is red or blue. I'm right. going to go on it because I want to flip around three times and spiral and then come back, right? So <laughs> if you can go to any slots director, table manager, GM of a property, and say, hey, what will work for you? But here, look, here's a suite, here's a library of content. 
and you can choose what best fits you. Yeah. Whether it's traditional wheel games or whether it's advanced interactive multimedia immersive games that a terminal will bring people on a journey and that's not just, and by the way, if they're not doing that, let them watch Monday Night Football on that same screen while it's working. Or by the way, you can throw up that every hour there's a free spin for gold members or there's a free game or there's a QR code on the screen that pops up only five minutes every hour. So you're increasing the dwell time, you're increasing the customer interaction with a device yeah. instead of it just being a wheel. That's great. I can't wait. Yeah, that's wild. It's so wild. Imagine if they made a slot machine based off of the outcome of what was happening in the game. So as you're playing, Ooh, now that you mentioned what it, game? oh yeah. <laughs> but think about it. We the, we the we did the footy game. So if you like, you have oh, so you to, watch like Real yeah, Madrid, yeah. and and, then, and uh, you're playing, and all of a sudden Real Madrid scores, and boom, jackpot on your slot machine. Well, isn't uh, what's Brooks's company? Gosh, uh, Brooks is. Uh, what? It's not in. in inspired. Think. Inspired. Yeah. Aren't they doing something like that? They have these old football outcomes, and then they. they I guess it's not a slot. Yeah, but that's not real time either. Oh, fair enough. It's okay. historical. Yeah, like yeah, historical horse race and so stuff. They have so the, they have the there's, foundation. There's a though. company in Europe that actually uses uh, historical plane flight times landings length of journey as, <laughs> as determining the outcome for the betting. So that's what that you plane crashed and just changes the flights on fire. Hey, yeah, only but a few of those. You know what kills me? Why why can't you interact with with real life? With with why isn't there an app for every game show on TV? Why isn't you know? I, yeah. Whatever you guys game shows are, I'm sure they're similar. Like even something as basic as Price is Right or <laughs> yeah, yeah. our Family Fortunes yeah, or whatever game the shows case are like be. the Real Housewives. There's actually some new game shows. I'm a sucker like, for game shows. I'm a we fan can of monetize that. that. No yeah. problem. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Could you imagine? And here she is. Does she yell at her husband more or less than six times today in, the, in this episode? Um, three to one. On. Three to one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Take the over. It's a great bet. Uh, no, exactly. Yeah, just monetize all of it. That's a great question. I don't know. Well, there's no reason. There's no technological impediment to doing that. It's down to the integrity of, of managing it and, and regulating it. And yeah. so there, there's no reason why any of this can't be done today. Yep. But it's why would I do it and spend millions of dollars in investment then, fingers crossed. Hope people adopt and it. And hope people yeah. adopt it. So that's why we've seen an awful lot of like these clusters of, of industries pop up around the world, whereas you guys have economy of scale. We don't in a lot of places yeah. in Europe. Okay, so bringing it back to your stuff then, talking about adoption, do you have... I mean, these wheels are physically present now. Yes, they're, they're installed. Exist. Starting in Europe, by the way. In we Europe, have, we haven't come to this part of the okay. world because you have that wonderful regulatory process. Yeah. Are, <laughs> it's a proctology we love exam our hoops. steroids. We want oh, you yeah. to jump through all of them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know I've done it before. I, I've run public companies sure. uh, in Canada. So I, I've been through um, uh, a couple of the provinces. The up ringer, there. Yeah. Hey, man, they, they go deep, right? Yeah, so no doubt. And of course, when you're not here or domiciled here, it's a whole different ballgame. Yeah. So, so they want to know, obviously, a lot of your history. And, and thankfully, um, uh, mine is clean as a whistle um, but they want you know 20 year this and they want siblings and they want a, yeah 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 dude have you ever been an Irish family you know we don't <laughs> talk to have <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah what, what does your sister and in, in-law's husband do no idea like, yeah, oh, I haven't no, spoken to her in 20 years I never know. met the guy yeah exactly it's I uh, couldn't tell you that is an interesting process I will say though what's interesting about that is as a gambler knowing all of that I go I feel much better about the game because then tribes do it commercial casinos do it right so when you go and there's there's days where you're like did they just rip me off because you lose, and you're like, eh, they, I know yeah. they didn't rip me off, right? I know it's very fair, it's legal, it's vetted. But do you? What? But do you really? I do know. Yeah, I mean, come on, man. I'm not questioning the integrity of the gambling industry, but it's just like. No, I do have to say, though, in Ireland, for a long time, I thought about our, our laws changing. Like, we have. 1931 betting act 1956 gaming and lotteries act yeah it only, sounds up to date only been amended recently yeah. but like, <laughs> our our mantra was you ask for forgiveness not permission oh interesting can you imagine trying to do that in this part of the world you don't oh, now you thankfully smack, it's, yeah. it's been addressed now so we have proper licensing now but it, it it still hasn't caught up the way you guys have it here but you know why do you have to apply for every year has something yeah. fundamentally changed? Can that? Why can't I do a five year thing right and have something material changes we submit that but right. not not have to have it team of compliance people costing millions just to fill out a 75 page form yeah. and, and uh, then get five attorneys doing <laughs> it really it. is a 75 page form it literally that's just is for yeah. us. that's like just Nevada yeah, yeah. yeah it's uh it kind of protects us a little bit in terms oh, of sure. a bunch it's of knuckleheads in and but it's also preventing a lot of Europeans yeah. coming in because there's some that going I just couldn't be arsed doing Nevada yeah. Yeah. because I've got 650 million people here in Europe yeah. and I don't have to jump through all those hoops. Yeah, yeah. Right. So I, it, it, it is what it is, right? Well, does that then lead to more like partnerships then? So is that one of those where you go, okay, so now instead of 
of Evo or Digiwheel or whoever coming in direct because we're going, wow, well, we don't want to make John jump through 96 hoops or, yeah. you know, however many across the U.S. You just go, we'll just partner with somebody and then ride their tail. I mean, is you, that just generally the easier path? You'd love to think so, but the regulatory environment doesn't lend itself. doesn't matter. You still have to do it. Yeah. you got to do it anyway. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. if you're, you know, the ultimate beneficial ownership and if you're the manufacturer, developer, whoever owns the intellectual sure. property, you're you're the guys that have to get licensed, got no it. matter what. Yeah. So yeah. You, you, you share that with someone, you give them half of whatever you're producing. Yeah, they, they can sell it and they can service it, but sure. you got to jump through all those regular tubes. And if you've gone that far, you're hiring half a dozen people. So... It's a challenge. It's an, yeah. just another barrier to doing business over here, which is why you, you guys don't get the benefit of a lot of the stuff that we do in Europe. But you guys do some amazing things here. We don't have as well, so I'm not suggesting one is no, better than the other. It's different. It's okay. yeah, yeah, it's just different. Courses yeah. for courses, yeah. literally. Yeah. <laughs> and um, we we just do things differently. That, sure. That's all it is. And as a result, not everything is shared over here. No doubt. Well, uh, we uh, this one went I was gonna say, a little longer, and this yeah, was an was unbelievable fun, fun episode. I, you're probably going to have to walk eight kilometers on this episode but uh we always ask everyone and i ask are you a gambler yourself uh i used to be yeah and it was just texas hole on poker because i was pretty good at it interesting Uh, but i had to stop i used to own a casino yeah back in cork yeah but the problem is when you go in and you play in your own casino which again you couldn't what was the casino called called? it was called the bank did you name it (laughs) that's such a good you you acquired a casino that was called no we literally set it up me and a couple of friends and and we literally set up and it was an old bank building oh i see okay just a cool name and and allowed us to get a lovely script thing but and sold it to a couple of poker pros who still run it to this day and asian oceans 13 still called the bank yeah yeah i hope i hope they're doing well but um the problem was when you play poker with your own known group of people then then it's a challenge and and it's a small but it's only half a million people in Cork so a lot of big games a lot of traveling games and uh, they're good games but then you have some fuckwit (laughs) on a Saturday night full of beer and he just sits down and he's just calling you every hand so it came to the point where I actually couldn't play a game anymore because you're going in there with a suited ace king and, and some dipshit is going with a, a, a 6-3 off suit and ah sure he might get a pair yeah. and then he hits a pair of threes on the river and then fuck I'm like, yeah. done so yeah, yeah I don't really gamble anymore but I in, in the entertainment but I gamble substantially to try stuff out yeah, I yeah. want to see the mechanic of how a slot works or mm. how a table game works so and, but that's just the, the engineer coming out of me so I wanted to understand it but no that's awesome Gambling as research is an expensive education. It can be. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the, I remember one of the things that I was so pissed off in a game of Texas Hold'em one, I, I literally never looked at a card until I had actually come to the point where, shit, the money's too big, I would have a look now. And I just, yeah. every time the cards are dealt, they were going, no matter where it was, big blind, small blind, it's just all in. Yeah. All in. Every yeah, hand. Yeah. Every hand. All in. And I just played it down. I said, don't turn my cards till the very end. And I was winning. Yeah, wow. But it came to the point where it was like final table, three people left. I still hadn't looked at a card and there was a substantial amount of money on the table. I'm going, shit, better have a look at the card. <laughs> yeah, seven, two off suit. Yeah. And there's a couple of crown on the table. No. So yeah, um, yeah. That, that was kind of it really. So no no major ridiculous uh, gambling experiences. A lot of weird gambling experiences in venues when, you know, back when, when, Gaming was different 20 years ago. There, oh, was, sure. there was a little, there's a few subtleties which I probably shouldn't share because in case it scares the life out of someone. But, you know, there, there was a lot of, there was a darker side to the industry once upon a time, which thankfully isn't there anymore. Yeah, Rad, put the light on that. Awesome. Ooh. And then last thing I know, you know, I mean, you're a fancy character yourself, so there's probably a ton of them that you know. Who should we interview in the future? Who's the, who's the call out? I'd love to bring someone from our part of the world. Uh, yeah. And uh, I'm just hoping, I'm, I'm trying to bring someone that isn't as full of shit as I am uh, <laughs> to, to come in and give you guys, hopefully, a better insight. Yeah. I, you know, probably one guy I'd call out every time is Simon Thomas. Okay. He's the CEO of the Hippodrome in London, okay. which is one of the premier properties, if not the premier property uh, in Europe. And, and Simon is just a, a wonderful guy. He's a gentleman on top of uh, having a, an extensive knowledge. And he's one of the people that grew up in industry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he literally it's in his mm. DNA like my own boys and, and my daughter who, who are going to be far superior to anything I ever have or, or I've done he's literally grown up with it and his father Jimmy Thomas and they started in, in bingo then on a large scale and they took on a ridiculously large project with the Hippodrome in London and it's now right on Leicester Square and, and he's a guy that just has his finger on the pulse and all things happening in the casino industry absolutely definitely I'd wholeheartedly recommend getting Simon on he's just a really great guy in. Simon says, let's do, this, let's do the podcast. Let's do it. He's going to have to fly over here, but we'll have a nice... Oh, I'm sure G2E. Yeah, we'll have some... Glass we'll, of whiskey we'll for him when he gets him, here. Yeah. So. He'll be here at G2E for sure. Perfect. Uh, Swing him by. Keep it good. 
Awesome. Well, John, this has been fun. Thanks for yeah, making the thank time. You so Thanks much. for flying across the pond and my genuine across the pleasure, whole gentlemen. Country. Yeah, and, absolutely. And you know what? Now you got to let me know how that whiskey works oh, out we'll for you. So. Have you tried it? Oh, it's just like a local uh, brewer. Okay. You can I, mean, I don't know. I mean, maybe he's like he's probably the mayor. The mayor of like, Middleton. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's that's like it. mother's milk. You couldn't once you start that stuff, it could be an expensive <laughs> habit too. That's it. Now we're now we're hosed. But I just uh, wanted to genuinely thank you guys. I, mean, I know I know it wasn't yeah. a big deal for you guys, but it's amazing how things like this do influence the industry. Yeah, yeah. and the medium you have is very very powerful, and I genuinely wish you nothing but the best. Thank Keep you. Keep it up, and it's an honor to be here. Thanks, guys. Appreciate thank it. You. Yeah, appreciate you. Well, good luck and cheers. Let's wrap it. Yeah.